Yeah, thank you both. Benny, that was fantastic, pitch perfect. Um, and now we'll have five minutes of questions. Um, so Johnny and Benny, if you wanna come up and, and sit down. Um, so we'll open it up to, to you guys. And if there aren't any questions, okay, all right, <laughs> so, excellent. Hey, I'm Gregory Sale. Um, hey, uh, I know both of you a bit. Can you speak a little bit about how you see the efforts like you're doing with getting out nationally and speaking about this issue, and how that sort of impacting, affecting what's happening on a national front mm -hmm. as far as shifting perceptions? and how uh, the perceptions, are they shifting? What does it feel? So it's a couple layers of this question and I'm sort of creating it as I go. But um, how does that feel as you step into the state that is so red, that it, uh, of the sometimes resisting reform? But can you just speak a little bit about what you're seeing and your role in it? <coughs> Yeah, so some states, you know, some states are uh, more progressive in criminal justice reform than others. You know, every now and then I do get shocked. You know, like, I, I'm not gonna lie to you, coming to Arizona has been a real eye-opener for me um, in terms of, of course, I have private prisons. You know, a lot of states don't. You know, every, anytime I think about private, the privatization of prisons where people profit off the agony and pain of others, of other human beings, you know, I just think that's not that's not a good place to be in. You know, um, as far as the national narrative, I will tell you that there are conversations that are happening that I have not seen since I've been doing this work, and it's, and that's not very long. It's been about five years. You know, um, I mean, there's been national attention. For example, not too long ago, in 60 Minutes, uh, Oprah did a piece on racket, on um, on a, a, a solitary confinement. You know, there's a few films on the issues of of, of uh, conditions of confinement, of course. The Rikers Island American Jail is one of them. Solitary by Christy Jacobson is another one. There's a few other films. I find that people are finally no longer ignoring the elephant in the room. Even Netflix released a movie called 13. We see a few books by Brian Stevenson, Michelle Alexander, where this conversation has been rising. You know, the, the, the public consciousness and awareness about how we treat people inside of our prisons is raising. You know, um, and people are having difficult, uh, very difficult questions, qu uh, conversations, conversations that leave us sometimes feeling uncomfortable because sometimes, for example, it's hard to talk about incarceration without talking about race. You know, um, it's hard to talk about incarceration without talking about the exuberant amount of money that we spend in incarceration, and then of course talking to talking about alternatives. You know, um, but to answer your question, I find that it's changing. It's not changing fast enough. I felt like it was changing a whole lot under the Obama administration. Now it feels like, you know, we're kind of moving a little bit backwards. You know, we're in a space in this country where, you know, we've criminalized mental illness, we've criminalized homelessness, we've criminalized substance abuse, we've even criminalized just being from another country. You know, and it's no wonder that we have the biggest, you know, um, uh, prison system, you know, incarcerating more people than anyone in the world. But I think that we're finally in a place where we're no longer ignoring the elephant in the room and trying to have these conversations to move us closer to a, a society that's more reflective of our shared values, if you will. There's a colleague of ours by the name of Glenn Martin who um, said that the people closest to the solution are the ones who are furthest from the problem. I think that there a conversation is having now and the younger generation are becoming very bold in their pro-activism. The conversations that we're having and the reason why we're doing what we're doing is because we have lived it. We didn't see this in prison break. We didn't see the, this in the shows like Oz and Orange and Black. We lived it. But there is hope for the men and women that are there. There are thousands of men and women all over the country who are probably much more eloquent than us and who are ready to just be given an opportunity. We are the ones who are fortunate, given the opportunity to be free, to speak truth to power. And our conversations are becoming contagious. Our conversations are sparking at least a dialogue. We may not see 
our goal, our goal is to put the Department of Corrections out of business. And the only way that we can do that is by one mind at a time. But how can that happen? In order for us to see a result, there has to be a conversation. All of us have differences in the room. But because we have differences, should I hate you because you disagree on one point? Let's understand and have a conversation. For example, why is this country so fascinated with incarcerating people of color? Let's talk about that. I don't care what your uh, differences are. Let's be honest about that conversation. Because in honesty in a conversation and being candid and poignant, I believe that we can come up to a solution. Please make no mistake, Johnny and myself are not advocating for the floodgates to be open. Let's get that straight. There are crimes that have been committed against communities in which they have imposed wounds that probably will never heal. But that does not, that does not mean that because of one act of antisocial behavior should tarnish the bright young, shining star for the rest of our lives. We shouldn't be paying a pound of flesh for the rest of our lives. There are several other countries in the world that one country in particular had to shut its prison's doors because they had nobody occupying them. There are several other countries where we can learn. I visited South Korea uh, three or four months ago and I saw two officers with no guns just walking around. And I asked, I said, let me visit the prison. And very rarely did you see the prisons filled to its capacity. So we should start having the conversation. The conversation has been going on. And I think that by the time we finish talking, I think we would have a solution. Yeah, I, I, wanna, I wanna add too, like, you know, I've spoken to police officers in training. I've spoken to conservatives. I've spoken to, you know, folks who you would never think are even thinking about reforming the system. And that conversation sounds a whole lot different. Of course, we do have differences about our responses to, to crimes and violence. You know, it's like the young, youthful kid who's arrested for drug offenses. You know, of course, we need all the reform for him or her, right? But now, later, well, earlier when the conversation was about violence would not be on the table. Now we're the most very, very recent, and Common Justice, Daniel Serrata, the Common Justice responsible for a lot of this work, we're having conversations about exactly how we respond to violence. Because the truth of the matter is that, you know, um, we, can, we, can, we can eliminate every single person in our nation's prisons who's been convicted of a drug crime or a minor nonviolent offense. We would still have the biggest prison population in the world. So we have to have a conversation about violence. We have to have a conversation about people convicted of sex offenses. That sometimes when I say that, people say, oh, well, that's exactly why we need to have that. You know, and, and of course, you know, um, rethinking about how we respond to it, but yeah. Yeah, and uh, I think Benny um, <coughs> found the nucleus. The people close to the problem are often, the people close to the, the, people close to the solution are often farthest from the problem. Um, and I think it's, as his story among countless others illustrate, it's just one person. Um, through education and um, in that still small voice. And that, that breathes life into these guys. And I think it's the obligation of those with education to seek out injustice. And until we're all kind of living with our education and in, in harmony with each other, I think um, we shan't stop from, from making it a better place.